Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me, Mr. P, and this is another episode in a Proxmox home server series. In this video, I will talk to you about Proxmox Firewall. There is a three places where you can set up firewall inside a Proxmox server. Under data center, if you scroll down inside your option list, you will find an option for firewall. The same option shows up under your nodes or node, depending if you run Proxmox as a, pro as a cluster or a single node and there is one underneath your Alexi container or VM. The way that the firewall works inside Proxmox server is in three stages or three separate instances. The data center firewall has a global effect across entire Proxmox server or Proxmox cluster. The node firewall takes effect only for that node. Whatever rule I will set up for PVE1, the same rules won't work for PVE2 as they won't show up here. And the third one is inside the Lexi container VM. Whatever rules you will set up inside the Lexi container VM will function only for that specific instant. It will not function inside the, P inside the node or data center. And to demonstrate one of the use cases for this kind of setup for with the firewalls inside the Proxmox, I will use what I set up in one of my previous videos. On the data center, if I scroll down, there is an option for permissions and then users. In one of the previous videos, I gave you a demo how to create the user and how to grant access for that user to one of the, your VMs or Lexi container. So I have a user, Frank, with his custom roles, role to access that VM or Lexi container, and he has his own Lexi container that he can access via his browser. When Frank accesses our Proxmox server, he has access only to this Lexi container, and he can go and use the Lexi containers he wants. So he can go and ping Google or Cloudflare. He can go and ping Google, Google DNS server to be exact. And he can go and update packages and install packages. But one thing that I don't like with this kind of setup is that the Jeff, uh, not Jeff, the Frank, he has access to ping on my local devices. Like for example, I'm right now pinging the VM which runs my Docker containers. And if somebody gets access to Frank account, basically Frank's account gets compromised and someone gains access, they can scan my local network and then try to brute force in, uh, brute force SSH into VMs and other devices. Like for example, if I'm gonna use Frank's account to access his LXC container and try to SSH into the VM, which hosts my all my Docker containers. And here we go. I can access my Docker VM via Frank's account. I don't like that. I would like that to be restricted, that Frank only uses LXC container to access internet, but he don't have access to my rest of my local network. And this is why we're going to use right now firewalls, and I'll show you how to set up. Setting a firewall when you have Proxmox with a single node and Proxmox as a cluster, there is slight, slightly difference between them. The Proxmox cluster requires a couple of more extra steps to to get done. I'll, I'll show you both ways. I will explain what you need to do when you have only one node or and what you need to do when you have multiple nodes. So step one is going into a data center. Scroll down until you find the firewall and this needs to be more options or should be more options underneath. So you click on a triangle to reveal more. And if you click on the options, it says firewall is no. That means firewall is offline and input policy is drop. That means that if I turn this on, default input or default incoming traffic policy is drop. If I will turn this on without setting up my first rule inside data center firewalls, I will lose access to my dashboard. I am just gonna have to physically try to go and connect to a server and via CLI and try to resolve this way. So before you turn this on, leave this as a says firewall no, go into a firewall option, click add, and we need to set up our first firewall rule to gain access to, to, to allow access to a dashboard. So traffic direction will be incoming traffic will be accepted by interface VMBR0. And why I picked VMBR0, zero, I will show you in a second. Then uh, this rule will be activated and destination will be 8006. 8006 is the default port number for web GUI for Proxmox server. So it's going to be incoming traffic will be accepted if it's coming via VMBI zero interface, regardless where it came from, as long as the destination is 8006. And protocol needs to be TCP. That means that access needs to be happening via HTTP or HTTPS protocol. And we're going to click add. So once that added, before I turn this on, 
I will show you how you how to find out if it is VMBI zero. If you click on your Proxmox node and under systems, you will find an option called network. Click on that and here we go. The line where you will find the IP address to that you're using to access your Proxmox web GUI. Next to it in the, at the beginning, you will find on the name column, the name of your interface. I would say nine out of 10 times, this will be VMBI zero. Unless you install Proxmox with very specific and the custom configurations, most likely this is gonna say VMBI zero. And it is the same on PVE two and PVE three. So once I confirm that they all VMBI zero, I can go back in a data center. And if you're running a single node Proxmox setup, so only one node, not a cluster, you can turn this on. If you're running Proxmox as a cluster, you need to do extra steps. Proxmox, uh, Proxmox node one, two, and three are linked between, and I'm using Ceph for the storage. So if I click on PVE one, I scroll down under Ceph options. If I click on that, I can see my Ceph cluster is healthy and Ceph can see each monitor and manager. If I click on a monitor, here we go. There is a specific port that Ceph uses to communicate to each other. So PVE 1, 2, and 3 between each other, they're communicating via port 6, 7, 8, 9. And if I click on a node and click on a firewall, options, default entry is firewall yes. Data center firewall settings under data center firewall and options, this is, you can treat this as a global switch. If I click on the PVE one and go under options and I want to turn this off, I'll get the warning saying that the data center level firewall at the data center level is turned off. So data center firewall switch is like a global effect. If you will switch that on without properly setting up nodes inside your Proxmox cluster for self communication, self will stop functioning. So right now we need to go and set that up. There's multiple ways how you can specify the Proxmox nodes. I will show you more specific one where I'm going to specify exact, uh, exact the um, IP address, but you can do as a, as a wildcard and I'll show you how. So I have PV1, which ends with 87 IP address. PV2 is 98 and PV3 is 82. So 87, 98 and 82. Under data center, I scroll down and under firewalls, there's more options here, more options showing up here. IP set, if I click on that, and I'll create the first IP set. IP set is more like a list. Instead of writing the IP addresses um, every time on and on, like basically going same, uh, same step, same IP address, entering over and over and over again, you can create IP set. So I'm gonna name this Proxmox Cluster. I'm gonna say Mr. P ch Channel Cluster. Oh, can't type today cluster nodes like that. So I have my IP set Proxmox cluster and the comment. And now on the right hand side, I can specify IP address CIDRs. So first IP address is 192.168.178.90.98. I do believe I already forgot 98, 82 and 87. So next one is going to be 82. And next one is going to be 87. That's fine. Let's, for example, say 87, it says PV1, so I can double click and say in, in the comments that is PV1. So we can name them, 82 is gonna be free. And here we go, I have all my nodes specified. So instead of entering the same IP addresses over and over again, I can specify the IP set list. Next, I will click alias, and I will create two records. First record will be gateway. This is basically the IP address of your router. This will allow nodes to access internet, download updates and etc. And the next one, I will type just NUC. And this is gonna be the computer that I'm right now using to record this video IP address. This way, I will make sure that I still have SSH access to any of these nodes if I need to go and do a maintenance on them or etc. So right now I have IPv IP set created with all three nodes and alias added in. When I mentioned about wildcard, you can create a wildcard, for example, local net, like that, for example, and enter the IP address of your local network as a subnet. 
So right now, what that means is that any local IP address, any local device has access to one of these nodes and, and every node can communicate to each other. I'm going to add, I will leave that in and we'll show you what to, how to set this up. So this is all done. So next thing, what we need to do, we need to go under PV1. Though, by the way, there is an option to create a security group. It it's basically means that you predefine the security the firewall options. Uh, and then you can add a security group per each node, but this is out, uh, this is a bit more steps required. I'm just going to show you a more simpler way. So on the PVE one, if I go and I click on a firewall, I will add first rule. First rule means that any traffic in, uh, as long as the source is the local Proxmox cluster, so that means traffic from Proxmox cluster nodes will be accepted. An interface you don't need to specify that in this case so every tra every every traffic incoming from any of these nodes into pv1 so technically it makes like pv1 will try to connect to each other but that's that's just uh, the way the list is set up so node 2 and 3 has access to node 1 add next outgoing traffic is accepted as long as the destination is my gateway that means that outcoming to outgoing traffic is re is accepted and incoming traffic accepted as long as the source is NUC accept and I can be more specific to add here SSH that means that the NUC only has access via SSH but I'm just going to leave that NUC computer has full con full access uh, to this node 1 okay so basically going quickly through the list I'm just going to make sure that they're in order because ordering is very important. Outgoing traffic is accepted. Incoming traffic from a NUC is accepted. And like this, an incoming traffic from Proxmox cluster is accepted. Now I need to repeat all these three steps per each node. So right now, every node has exactly the same rule setup. Node 3 has accept traffic out and from any Proxmox cluster and in if it's a NUC. And the same here and the same here. So that means that right now incoming traffic is accepted and our, uh, as long as it's com is coming from one of these nodes or my NUC and outcoming traffic is accepted because I want to make sure I get updates coming in to the node to the to the nodes. So once all these free all the nodes has exactly the same uh, firewall rule set up, I can go to a data center, scroll down, double check if I have in accepted VMBI0 via port. 8006 I can go to options and turn this on once it's on it takes about five seconds to take effect let's refresh that's happened and I still have access to dashboard so that's great so dashboard um, the data center firewall is working correctly let's check what the nodes doing so if I go to Ceph there is no warning showing up it's actually a relief and everything is clean so it means the no the the nodes communicated to each other with no problems and let's right now click on a for example node 2 I'll go to update click refresh click OK and let's see if it's going hitting the internet and fetching the list of the new packages task is completed so it does have access uh, to the internet to retrieve the updates and my my NUC let's quickly run the CMD and let's see if I can go and SSH into one of the nodes. Let's say, for example, let's take uh, the PV, PV, not PV2, um, 98. Yes. And I do have access to PV2, so my NUC is accept the, the Proxmox cluster or nodes accepting traffic from my, my computer. So once everything is set up, right now we can go and set up the rules on the Frank LXC container to make sure that Frank not don't have access to a local devices I'm click on a Frank um, Alexi container and now inside the firewall under options currently is being off and input traffic is drop and output policies accept so right now what I need to do I click on a firewall I need to add the first rule so the incoming traffic is accepted that means that any traffic coming in is accepted any traffic going out to the source of gateway is accepted and add any traffic that going out will be rejected if a destination is my local network. Local net, 
if I click on this and that, local network is the alias we created on the data center, firewall, and then alias list. So local network represents every single device in my network. But this every single device in the network includes the, includes the route as well. So this is why, like I said, the ordering is very important. First of all, we accept the traffic in, we accept the traffic out to the internet, and we reject the traffic to a local network. The way it works, that first of all, all the traffic in will be accepted. And if LXC container tries to access anything, let's say google.com, it will go via gateway and it will work. But if, if the LXC container tries to access, let's say my Docker VM with AP address ending 124, it will skip to rule number two. And as this one says, reject. So once that in under options, for this LXC container, firewall and options, I will turn this on. So that's this is on. So let's go back to Frank's uh, browser. Let's refresh this. Usually it takes about five seconds, five, six seconds to take effect for the firewall. And right now, as you let's go and try to ping Cloudflare DNS. Cloudflare DNS is working. Let's try to ping my router, which is like that. And obviously right now it says not working. So no, it's not source, sorry. It needs to be destination gateway. Here we go, I messed up. And now I'll go back to Frank. Let's try again. Here we go, now it's working. So the ping to a Cloudflare does work. Ping to my gateway is working. What about ping to my Docker VM? It's not working. So if I go to the command where I try to SSH into my Docker VM, I press enter. Connection refused. Firewall is blocking connection from a Lexi container to a local network. Only the gateway, only the route is accepted. Everything else is rejected. And yes, I done a little mistake here, adding this one in the wrong place. If you want to go and mess around with the firewall and you're afraid that you're going to break your Proxmox server, I did a video how you can create Proxmox Sandbox. I will leave a link to that video in the description below. Proxmox Sandbox is nothing else as just a virtualized Proxmox inside the Proxmox. So you virtualize the Proxmox instant inside your master Proxmox server and you can go in that Sandbox Proxmox setup and mess around with the firewall without fear that you're gonna break your main Proxmox cluster or Proxmox server. This is how I learned everything. This is how I try to teach myself everything. I'm not going straight away to my main Proxmox instant. I always go to a sandbox, mess around there, break it, fix it, learn it, correct it. And once I'm capable and once I'm, I'm confident, capable to set everything up and I know that what I'm about to set up will not break, then I move stuff to, let's say, a production. So you get yourself a staging Proxmox setup inside the Proxmox host. Anyway, so that's it. Quick rundown, in the data center, we have a firewall turned on because it's a global effect across your Proxmox server. But before turning this on, we created the first rule which allows traffic, HTTP or HTTPS traffic to a dashboard. Without this rule, I won't be able to access dashboard or web GUI anymore. And before switching on, if you're running the Proxmox cluster, before switching this on, you need to make sure that each node has a specific rules added which allows node, com node communication between each other and more specifically Ceph and add your main computer as an in accepted just to, for you to be able to SSH into each of the nodes. And outgoing traffic is accepted as long as destination is internet, in this case is my gateway. The same rule needs to be applied across the board. Once all this is done, you can go and switch the firewall on on the server, on the data center and options. And once that's on, you can go and set up other rules. There is a multiple ways you can set this up, what I just did now. Like I said, you can go inside the data center, firewalls and security groups, and you can create a security group here already that you just add once and that is it. There's a multiple, multiple, multiple ways you can get this done. Just please make sure that you do the steps in the right order, otherwise you'll lose access to your Proxmox server. And if you're not sure, like I said, set up yourself a Proxmox sandbox for you to go and test it out. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's, you found this video helpful. And like always, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.